los periódicos más famosos del mundo mienten. ¿Fue Albert Einstein el hombre más listo del mundo y el más grande científico que haya podido existir en la Tierra? Albert Einstein is today revered as the greatest genius of the 20th century. Einstein was a Jewish physicist and a member of the German Communist Party, a Zionist and a supporter of the Bolshevik slaughtering regime in Soviet Union. He is credited with creating Einstein's special and general theory of relativity. His writings have been accused of plagiarism by many historians and researchers. One of the most famous mathematical equations in the world, E equals mc squared, was first published by Olinto de Preto two years prior to Einstein's publishing of the equation. The equation, E equals mc squared, should rightfully be called the Preto equation. He was a commie. He says he was a pacifist, but he wanted war with Germany. He actually wanted to genocide Germans. There was a quote where he said, the Germans can be killed or constrained after the war, but they cannot be re-educated to a democratic way of thinking and acting. It is hoped that by war's end, they will largely have been killed off. Albert Einstein said this. At Lincoln University, California, Einstein gave a speech in which he called racism a disease of white people and added, I do not intend to be quiet about it. But he was vehemently anti-nationalist and anti-white, but very, very pro-Jewish. In fact, he was offered a presidency of Israel. He politely declined the offer by saying, I'm deeply moved by the offer from our state of Israel and at once saddened and ashamed that I cannot accept. He was a hardcore Zionist but opposed nationalism at every turn for Europeans. In fact, he wanted to crush it. So what did he give us anyway? Everything is relative, relative, moral relativism. Nothing is certain. No such thing as an absolute. Anything goes. What is truth anyway? There's no meaning except relativism, of course, right? So only his view of the universe is the right one that we're all choking to death on, right? And many physicists disagree with his theories because that's all they are, is theories. Well, how, is he, how has he even gotten this big in the first place? Well, it's a fact that his work was not only twisted unscientific ideas, but that it was science that was plagiarized. I know Red Eyes uh, did a show on this, a great show on this, uh, covering this in detail. His writings included his popular 1924 book, Meaning of Relativity, which was plagiarized from the Lorentz Transformation, plagiarism of the mass energy equivalents, largely based on the work of George Fitzgerald and Hendrik Lorentz, Irish and Dutch theoretical physicists. And also the work of French physicist Henri, help me with this, Poincaré. Henri Poincaré. <laughs> there you go. He developed Henri a, Poincaré. Oh, there you go. He, he developed <laughs> a theory of relativity years before Einstein. Einstein. And it gets worse. Plagiarism of Paul Gerber's, or is it Gerber's, groundbreaking work on the speed of gravity. Okay, this was a German guy. And the idea that the speed of light was a constant and was independent of the motion of its source was not Einstein's at all, but was proposed by the Scottish scientist James Maxwell in 1878. Also, Berhard Riemann, a German, was the first to develop a sound non-Euclidean geometry, which is the basis of all the math he used to describe relativity. Also, it goes on, Heinrich Hertz, the, the father of the unit of frequency Hertz, right, sound right, vibration, discovered that electrolodes illuminated with ultraviolet light and they create electric sparks more easily. Well, in 1905, Einstein published the paper explaining this the same experiment from Hertz's photoelectric effect. And it was actually Hertz's discovery that led to the quantum revolution. Yet Einstein was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1921 for the discovery of the law of the photoelectric effect. Okay. It goes on. Nikola Tesla, he could not stand Einstein. In fact, he called him an old crank. He gave a scathing analysis of Einstein's relativity theory, calling it a magnificent mathematical garb, which fascinates, dazzles, and makes people blind to the underlying errors. The theory is like a beggar clothed in purple whom ignorant people take for a king. He said this in 19. 
1835. Uh, John Murray Cudahy, a brilliant known sociologist, said Einstein was motivated by a desire to distort and destroy Western science. Very, very accurate. Dayton Clarence Miller, president of Britain's Royal Astronomical Society, disagreed with all Einstein's theory. He had his own absolute space theory, which is interesting. And it goes on, a hundred prestigious Austrian and German scientists denounced him in this book, uh, Hundert, uh, I don't know how to say it, Otter and Giggin, I'll, I'll pull it up right here, um, accused him of being a pseudo-mysticism and uh, pseudo-mystic and, uh, and just speculating everything, basically. A hundred scientists. H.L. Mencken, there is sound reason for believing that Einstein will not hold up in the long run. His curved space may be classed with psychosemantic bumps of gall and spurs Time, two other brilliant scientists. So the point is, we wouldn't be in the Stone Age without him, hardly. We'd be cultivating other planets by now, right? And then people who say, oh, you're just jealous of him, or oh, it's because he's Jewish. No, it's because he was a thief, a liar, and a plagiarist, and an awful person in his uh, private life, and, uh, you know, true brilliant people couldn't stand him, and they viewed him as a crackpot, a crackpot, and a liar, and a plagiarist, because he was. And Einstein criticized scientists he felt threatened by true geniuses like Erwin Schrödinger, quantum theory, Werner Heisenberg, Hilbert Planck. He was actually the jealous one who was attacking all these, but he, he was propped up as the archetype of brilliance, genius in science, the smartest man alive, and he was a Jew, right? So he's just a pure creation, basically, of a Jewish media hype that was manufactured in the 20s, basically like a pop star. But he was a commie who failed his college entrance exam and shamelessly ripped off true geniuses. So he's all smoke and mirrors. He's a fraud, people. And I don't know if you guys have heard this before, but it, it's massive. Germany, Henrik, as you said, was thriving. I mean, just um, amazing minds were coming out of Germany in this time. It's not like Einstein took Germany out of some kind of stone age and they they were, you know, they were not going to advance without his brilliance, right? While Europe was still at peace in 1939, the development of the American atomic bomb was proposed by Albert Einstein, Eugene Wigner, and Leo Slissard, all Jews, to Roosevelt. They wrote a letter to him in which they described the power of a potential atomic bomb. Einstein falsely insinuated that Germany was already working on an atomic bomb and urges Roosevelt into building such a weapon. Out of this effort emerged the Manhattan Project, in which the development of the atomic bomb was done. The leader was Robert Oppenheimer. Developers were Richard Feynman, Owen Chamberlain, Enrico Fermi, Edward Teller, John Neumann, and others. On the afternoon of April 12, 1945, Roosevelt died in a massive stroke. The failed businessman and KKK member, Vice President Harry Truman, now became president. Roosevelt's Jewish and communist inner circle continued to run the show while Truman from misery delivered his speeches.